This is Bob Live. This week's guest is Cole Escola with musical guest Fat. Please welcome Bob the Drag Queen. Hello, 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 hello. Did I say hello? Halo, halo. Ooh, ooh. Hit me like a racer. I'm moving to your dog and ride. Can I tell you right now what I've been realizing is, bitch, if, if record labels heard me singing in the shower, they would give me every record deal ever. Something happens when my foot crosses that uh, ceramic tub. When I put my foot down on this side, all of a sudden I start sounding like a mere mortal again. Also, it is 7 o'clock in New York City. I live in Washington Heights. I'm very close to Columbia uh, Hospital Medical Center. So every day at 7 o'clock, my neighborhood goes ham. So you hear horns screaming and all that outside. It is not the apocalypse. It is actually just appreciation for essential workers. So thank you to all the essential workers, to nurses, to doctors, to grocery store workers, to cab drivers, delivery people. You are genuinely genuinely making the world go around right now. So my hat's off to you. Why oh, did not shave my head? Oh, I look like an old man. Oh, oh my goodness. Don't, don't screen grab it. Now they're going to screen grab it. I shouldn't have said, now they're all going to go back and screen grab it. Oh my, and they're going to edit in all the smuts and stuff. So I want to talk about a couple of things that are going on um, in the news media. First of all, okay, uh, Lady Gaga, uh, the Obamas, and Condoleezza Rice are having a virtual commencement ceremony for graduates next next month, which is honestly pretty amazing. My uh, graduation did not have anyone that famous at it. In fact, my graduation was on a football field in Clayton County, Georgia, and um, it was also really long because I went to a really, really big high school. So there was just so much, there was a lot, it was really a long process. Also, just so you guys know, I am reading all of your comments while you type them. So I can, if you have any questions or anything, lay, lay those in there right now. Um, but yeah, so that is, so like, how exciting is that? That Also, it just seems like it's going to be Lady Gaga and all of her black friends. <laughs> so Lady Gaga's like, I call the Obamas, I call Condoleezza Rice, um, my cousin Shaquan going to be there, my cousin Trelana going to be there, and yes, I do have a cousin whose name is actually Trelana. Come for me, mom. Um, so I want, speaking of which, I want to talk about the fact that uh, Becoming, the book, so... Michelle Obama has a book called Becoming. Everyone knows the book Becoming. It is now a Netflix movie they have made. It's not like, not don't, I'm oh, sorry, not a biopic. It's not like going to be like, Bob the Drag Queen is Michelle Obama. Um, although I think I would make a great Michelle Obama. Bitch, I could play Michelle Obama and Barack Obama. Come on, honey. Yes, I'll do that. But no, it's, it's a documentary about Michelle Obama's life and being a, a black girl from the south side of Chicago to becoming the first lady. Like, talk about a story of perseverance. She says, uh, this is totally, un this is me totally unplugged for the first time. So I don't know if Michelle's gonna be like taking out her tracks, or if Michelle's gonna be like, y'all wanna get popping, let's get it popping. Uh, but I'm just, I don't know, it just seems really exciting, the idea of seeing Michelle Obama like fully, I don't know, I, I was thinking today, if I saw Michelle Obama, I might cry. I think I would actually cry. If, like if I if I knew I was gonna see her, if I was like prepared to see her, someone was like, you're gonna be meeting Michelle Obama pretty soon. I was like, you know what, I'm good. But if I was just at Dwayne Reed and I saw Michelle Obama buying some potato chips, I would just, I think I might collapse. I would hit the ground and I wouldn't know what to do. That's how I feel about a lot of people though too. Like speaking of like Michelle taking the tracks out, I said that because if anyone saw Celebrity Drag Race this past week, in the within five minutes, Vanessa Williams is just ripping hair out of her head like she is into a in a fight at the McDonald's at the West Four stop in West, the West Village. Like she is just ripping her hair out. I, it was amazing. Um, let's talk about this. So Naomi Campbell is on the cover of Essence magazine for the 50th anniversary. So Naomi Campbell and Essence magazine are both going to be 50 years old this year. So this is a big deal, but what makes it even more of a big deal, look at this picture. Are you looking at this? Is it this way? Are you looking at this picture? She is, she did her own makeup. 
She did her own hair. She did her own styling. And I'm not done, ladies and gentlemen. She took this picture herself on her iPhone. Mama, the quarantine has hit the supermodels. Girl, this is a... Also, she looks so good. This is the first time... I'm looking at the picture like gagging. This is the first time that uh, the cover of Essence has ever been shot on an iPhone. I mean, granted, iPhones have only been around for about 10 years. So in their first 40 years, I don't know what the hell they were shot on. Probably 35 millimeter and then digital. And now it is like she did this herself. She did her own makeup. Like, I, I went to go see Naomi. So I was at the HRC gala this year. Not to brag, honey, but I was invited to the HRC gala this year. And um, I got a chance to see Naomi Campbell in person. It was they were honoring Naomi Campbell and uh, Kristen Chenoweth. And there is something about being in the same room as Naomi fucking Campbell. Like when she walked across the stage, I was just thinking to myself, oh my God, it's Naomi Campbell. It, oh my God, that's Naomi Campbell. She's walking. Like I literally saw her do the Naomi Campbell walk in real life. I was fully shook. And I also didn't realize that Mama does so much philanthropy. Like, first of all, Nelson Mandela named her his daughter. She was like, you, he was like, you are my daughter. Imagine Nelson Mandela's like, you're my daughter now. Like, that is such a big deal. Um, but also, just honestly, and I want to talk about this about Naomi Campbell too, because a lot of people go on, on and on about how like Naomi Campbell might be mean or whatever. Girl, let me tell you right now, she's a supermodel, she's a philanthropist, and she's allowed to have an attitude every once in a while. We're all allowed to have an attitude every once in a while. We have this thing where we want like celebrities to be like perfect models of humanness. Also, I'm realizing now this is a, a dress that I'm wearing from Coach, and because it is like women's clothing. I can't button up the sleeves because they're too short. Whenever I buy like ladies' clothes, look how short the sleeves are. Look at that shit. Anyway, so congratulations to Naomi Campbell. I know I'm I'm all over the place today. So congratulations to Naomi Campbell. Um, also, comment. I want to hear what you all think about this Naomi Campbell thing. This is amazing. She's a legend, like for real. Yes, David Lav, she is. She's done so much for our community as well as people all over the world. Yes, Chester Campbell said that fighting for people with HIV and AIDS, especially in Africa. Everyone talks about the um. People talk about the AIDS epidemic, like, because it's in America, it's calmed down, and because it's not a death sentence in America, it's done. Mama, AIDS is still running rampant throughout Africa, insanely. So I just love that she's doing that. Um, someone said, like, when RuPaul named Plastique his daughter. Gave her, gave her, you remember when Plastique was crying and RuPaul was like, you are my daughter now, and she hugged her. Um, so, yeah, anyway, thank you all for those comments. And the last thing I want to talk about is this, because this has blown social media up adele is skinny now people are so like intense about this in so many ways and there are lots of people saying and i agree actually people are saying it is actually not good to say congratulations you're skinny because that has a negative thought and impact on people who are not skinny and also saying that like as if she's more beautiful now because she's skinny i will say this if Adele was, like, aiming to lose weight, if her goal was, like, I would like to lose weight, I would like to, you know, do this for myself, then congratulations for reaching your goal. But I do want to say, like, it does mean a lot to affirm someone, especially if it's someone that you love. I have a partner who I gained a little bit of weight recently. I got up to, I was about 30 pounds heavier than I am right now. And uh, he'd always say, you know, I like you uh, with your belly and with your less belly. I wouldn't say I don't have a belly, but with your belly and with less of a belly. Because I'm, I'm about here right now. This is where I am nowadays. I'm trying to get there, but I'm kind of like in this territory. Um, so I just want to say, if Adele was looking to lose weight, congratulations for reaching your goal. But also, look at these pictures of Adele. What I love is this, like, big Adele who was like, I think this is Adele when she was singing like um, from the album 19, I think. Um, which I've always said, naming your album after your age is really cute when you're 19 and when you're 20 and when you're 27 or whatever. But um, I don't know how cute that's going to be. I, actually, you know what would be fierce? 75. 75 would be like, this album is great. But I got to feel that like 33 and 35 and like 42... I don't know that those albums are going to be, like, have the same, eh. but something about, like, wow, you were 19, you did this, wow, you were 75, you did this, like, wow, you're middle-aged, bitch, you should be doing this, but anyway, 
So that's what I'm. Oh, oh my God, Bob is expecting y'all are so shady. I'm reading these comments. Um, I love her. No matter, Amanda Lee says I love her no matter what weight she is. Happy she's uh, ha happy she's happy in her skin, and she does look happy there too. Um, also, talk about the weight she really lost. She got divorced, so she probably lost about two hundred pounds. <laughs> dead weight, girl. Let me tell you right now. People don't understand this. Every other album Adele had was from a breakup from a boyfriend. Bitch, Adele has a child and she is divorced. This next album is about to break the internet. Oh, the, all everything you all that stuff Adele said before was just from having her feelings hurt from a high schooler. Imagine when Adele's like, I have a baby. We was married. Like whoever the guy she Married, divorced, I don't know his name, but that nigga better move out of the UK because he's about to be public enemy number one, two, three, four, and five. So best of luck to whoever divorced Adele because when this next album drop, honey, girl, whoa, this is about to be fierce. Now, I do want to say to you all, uh, this is being broadcast across my Facebook, my uh, Twitch, which uh, is brand new. Mitch, how many viewers do we have on Twitch right now? I don't know how, how many... Oh my god, 19 Twitch viewers. I gotta start pushing my Twitch more. I don't really have much of a Twitch, but if you are a Twitcher, then it's there. So it's on Twitter, it is on Facebook, and it is on um, Twitch. Twitch, Facebook, and Twitch. No, Twitter, Facebook, and Twitch. The only comments I am reading, however, are currently from the Facebook. So if you would like to come and have me read it, I'm only reading comments on Facebook. Also, listen, if you are watching this on Facebook, please take a moment to click that. Is it that way? It's that way. Click that share button. That will really help me out a lot. I'm gonna refresh my page right now to see how many folks of you have shared this. Because the more, listen, we don't. I'm not. I don't have like some big production company behind me. This is the only production. This is me and Mitch doing this. I am in my living room, and Mitch is in his basement in New Jersey. So if you could help us out, that would really, it'd be really appreciated. Um, Oh, and Mitch's mom has commented hi. So thank you, Mitch's mom. We are at 14 shares. I would love to get this to 60 shares before it's over. If you're just tuning in, I am Bob the Drag Queen. This is Bob Live, a quarantine talk show that I'm doing from my home every single week. And if this keeps getting successful, maybe I'll take it past the quarantine. Maybe we'll really get up in these streets, Hanny. Y'all can go on tour with me if we ever open up. <laughs> our um, country again. All right, with that in mind, I am so excited about our amazing guest today. We have Cole Escola, we have Fat. I am so excited. So uh, let's take a look at this clip from Help, I'm Stuck, from Cole Escola. Welcome back to Early This Morning Today. I'm one of several Dianes. Before the break, we were trying to get Mario Lopez out of his suitcase. You can head over to our Facebook page to catch an exclusive look at his final breaths, as well as his last words. They're not what you think they would be. If you're just now joining us, welcome. We've got an exciting hour ahead. The cast of Gilmore Girls is here to apologize. But first... <laughs> Oh my God, please give it up. So that was a clip from Help, I'm Stuck, a special no one asked for. And that is that is in in um, Cole's very own words. Cole, thank you for joining us. How are you today? I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Cole, I... I have to say this, you are genuinely one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. I don't know if you remember this, but I met you years ago at the Bowery Poetry Club. It was me, Bianca Del Rio, you, and and uh, Daniel Nardicio used to do this show at the Bowery Poetry Club. And um, you had agreed to be sugared on stage live. You were there for that? Girl, I was, I was there that night. And so... It, okay. And you're yeah. a little hairy, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, Cole I agreed to be sugared. If you don't know what sugaring is, where they take, like, basically really thick, thick, thick syrup, or taffy almost like, and you put it on the skin, and then you pull it, and it just rips out all the hair. I'm completely painless. Is it really? Yeah. 
it was completely painless. It's not like waxing. So it's really a great alternative. But um, yeah. <laughs> Are you still sugaring these days? Oh, no. I, mean, I can't <laughs> reach back there, you know? <laughs> Um, so let's talk a little bit about Help Me, I'm Stuck. It was so funny. My A friend of mine, um, shout out Nick Smith, and if Diane is watching, Diane loves when I shout out her her baby. Uh, my friend Nick Smith uh, was like, you need to watch this. And it was pretty nonstop laughs from the beginning to the end. I, I especially loved your Jennifer Convertible sketch. Oh, thank you. So what inspired you to make this special? Um, well, I really wanted... I just really wanted to. And uh, then um, I was trying to get other people to like pr help me produce it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'll do it all myself. I just need, you know, I, I just, I wanted it to be on like a, a Netflix or something. Um, yeah. And then everyone said, um, they didn't, people didn't say no, but it was very like, um, you know what? <laughs> We're going to, we're going to think about that, actually. We're going to think about that. So it was like, basically, no. And then I was bummed about that. And I was like, wait, why? Did, what's holding me? What's keeping me from making it? And then yeah. I, nothing. And did you make the whole thing in quarantine? Yeah. All of it in quarantine by myself. Night or... shoots because my neighbors are loud. And so I would film from like 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. Um. Yeah. Also, by the way, if you have, but if you're just tuning in, this is Bob Live. Today, my special guests are Cola Scola and Fat. I'm right now talking with Cola Scola. If you have any questions for Cole, please go ahead and comment them um, right here in the uh, right there in the comment section, and we will ask those questions toward the end. Uh, I, I mean, I can't believe they would say. First of all, you're insanely funny, and your resume is so. Um, just to name a few things: At Home with Amy Sedaris, Mozart in the Jungle, Difficult People, Man Seeking Woman, um, and I mean, going back to when I first learned about you was uh, VGL Boys, which seemed to turn into the show Jeffrey and Cole Casserole on Logo. So, like, you have an amazing resume, but I, I do feel like sometimes it is harder for queer artists to get yeah. a foot in the door, and they will give straight people any. A TV show about any fucking stupid thing. They'd be like, oh, this straight guy wants to do a show about, you know, eating hot wings. There's a show called Hot Wings, which I actually kind of want to be on. It actually is a pretty smart <laughs> idea for a show. Yeah. But they do these shows about, like, practically anything. And when queer people have really great ideas, it seems to be such a long journey to get on TV. Yeah, it's really hard to make queer stuff that's not about being queer. Or it's hard to sell stuff that's not, like explaining to a straight audience like this is the queer experience like anything mm -hmm. that's like made by queer people for queer people is like lost on you know all the people in suits what so cole wrote on uh, by the way if you're just tuning in again this is bob live i'm joined by cola scola later on i'll be joined by fat music starring aaron pfeiffer and cedric um but when i was watching the show the other two i remember watching and thinking to myself oh gays wrote this like, mm -hmm. it is queer humor, and it is really, and it's, I remember being like, this is legit one of the funniest TV shows I have watched in a very, very long time. And, and then I was looking through, and I saw your name pop up as a, um, you had a producer credit you were writing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which episodes did you write on? Um, I mean, everyone wrote on all of them, but then I wrote specifically, my name was on the Instagays episode. Um, you wrote that insta gay episode was so there's a scene where they're in a church just doing like naked photo shoots in a church and unless you know an insta gay you're like no one would do that bitch insta gays will take a photo in front of the 911 memorial and be like never forget never <laughs> fucking forget I mean, it even got like um made because it's so specific in an instigay like we had to explain to like the two straight people in the room what they even were and they're like oh okay and to those of you asking the show is called uh the other two it was on comedy central i got it on um i think i just purchased it on amazon actually because i don't have cable um but yeah it's called the other two you have to watch it it is such a freaking hilarious funny show and you know years ago i saw you um you and jeffrey down and I can't remember that you did like, it was like Jeffrey and Cole's big adventure. Something like that. 
Um, and it was like yeah. a musical, and you two, it was like you two getting into a fight, and then you became friends. So I've been a fan of yours for a really long yeah, time. I think we'll make it bigger. That's what we call Yes. Like, I mean, yeah. you just, you're, do you have anything, uh, do you, again, do you guys have any questions for uh, Cola Scola? I'll be uh, asking those questions right now. Um, this show, which show is this? Oh, again, I told you it was called We Love Queer Humor. The people are saying they love you. Um, I'm going through these questions. Bop, 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 bop. Oh, you were on Nurse Jackie too. Yeah, yeah, at the cock. We filmed it at the cock. <laughs> Just so you are really moment. out here in these streets, like like yeah. getting it popping, honey. You really are working, honey. Work, Miss Thing. I've been like one thing a year for the past ten years. And but also, paper, it looks great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you just do one thing every year. Yeah, yeah. Someone wants to know. Okay, uh, Cesar de la Rosa wants to know what are your thoughts on Drag Race? But this is a Drag Race audience, so there'll all be questions about <laughs> Drag Race. My question, my thoughts on Drag Race? Yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts on Drag Race? I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. Sure. <laughs> um, someone wants to know if you, uh, uh, Emojin Jean wants to know if you will sugar them. Will you sugar this person? Um, no. <laughs> no. Um, this person wants to know, uh, Trinity Smith wants to know, what's it like working with Amy Sedaris? Oh my God, uh, she's um, everything that you would want her to be. She's the best. She's so funny. She calls me a faggot all the time. It's um, <laughs> and she's like the only person, the only straight woman allowed to use that word. Um, we all, I, I decided that she's the only straight <laughs> allowed to use that word. And, um, I don't know. She's just the best. She's very thoughtful. She gave me, um, for my birthday, a box full of 200 um, single dollar bills. Um, yeah. There's a really great scene in, um, in uh, the other two where the brother is going to meet an, an agent, like an, an, an acting agent. And right when he walks in the door, she goes, yes, faggot. And yeah. that was what I was like, this is so well. That was one of the moments I was like, this show is brilliant. This show is do you know who wrote that line specifically? Because I want to clap for that person. I think it was Jordan Firstman. I think it was Jordan Firstman. Yeah. Um, and then this person wants to know, um, uh, they, they, they really are obsessed with drag race. Who's your favorite drag queen? Do you have a favorite drag queen? Um, aside from you, and I thought we met at, um, at uh, Barracuda with, through Josh Sharp. Oh yeah, I love Josh. Love Sharp. Love yeah. Josh Sharp. But um, you know, I, my other favorite I, is um, Linda Simpson. Linda Simpson is great. If you all, if you're interested in like some real fierce, dry humor, please get into Linda Simpson. It is the Linda. If you imagine, if someone's drag, if someone's mom was a drag queen, <laughs> that is who Linda. She like she walks. She has a very thick New York accent. She walks around with a with a camera, taking pictures of everything, and she's just the uh, the archive of queer culture. Um, yeah. I don't want to keep you too long. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time to chat with us and thank taking you. a break from. I know you're very busy. You are writing, so thank you so so much. Is there anything else that um that you would like to talk about or promote or anything before you we got here? No, just um, hopefully watch this special, and um, I love you. I love your HBO show, and I can't wait to see what happens with you. Thank you, Cole. Thank you. Please go watch Help, I'm Stuck. It is right now available on YouTube, and it is available on Cole's uh, Instagram. I prefer watching it on YouTube because it's a larger screen, obviously, but go check it out. It is really, really great. Thank you to Cole. Let's go. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. My pleasure. My pleasure. Oh, I love Cole. Um, and now we are going to take a, a, a little moment to listen to a, a song that I just discovered because it was sent to me through the DMs. This is Fat. All right. Don't tell me. Right. <clears throat> Last night I fell apart at the thought of breaking off We thought all that work we put in wasn't paying off Then as we went walking through the park You pulled out that cushion and we started going off 
Weren't you the one who was chasing me? Always looking at my phone, keeping tabs to see. Funny how my line changes everything. Struggle got me banging on my hands and knees. Thought my struggle got me thinking how this happened to me. How'd it happen to me? Oh, oh. Power struggle. Bring me back to life. Bring me back to life. You know you're the only one to bring me back to life. When you're next to me, it feels so fine. It feels so, feels so light. When you're next to me, I feel your heartbeat with mine. Just a party, but it's just a start. Then, as we went runway taking off, you pulled out that good shit and we started going off. Weren't you the one who was chasing me? Always looking at my phone, keep it tabs to see. Funny how our line changes everything. Struggle got me begging on my hands and knees. Power struggle got me thinking how this happened to me. How'd it happen to me? Oh, oh, power struggle. Bring me back to life. Bring me back to life. You know you're the only one to bring me back to life. Bring me back to life. You know you're the only one to bring me back to life. When you're next to me, it feels so fine. So feels so alive. When you're next to me, feel your heartbeat. Mine. When you're next to me, it feels so fine. It feels so, feels so alive. When you're next to me, feel your heartbeat with mine. Yeah. Thanks for watching. We are fat. All right. Oh my goodness. Please welcome from fat. This is my old friend, my old boss, actually. Oh my God. <laughs> Aaron Pfeiffer, who is now living in Berlin. What time is it in Berlin? It is 1.30 in the morning here. Oh, my God. Thank you so much for staying up late. Which, I mean, for us back in the day, Mary, this was not late. We used to stay up this to, was like... This just getting started. I mean, literally, my show would be ending in 10 minutes. Oh, my <laughs> was... gosh. So many endless <laughs> nights with you. I can't even. I'm just beaming right now to see your face. I love you. So, everyone listening, that was Back to Life by Fat. This is Aaron Pfeiffer and... um. Aaron, uh, Fat is composed of Aaron and Cedric. I might have you go uh, storm that room later on so we can say, hey, is he going to be like, do not? He's been like, he's just been a mess since yesterday. It's been really weird. He like, a headache, he's, and then he's like, I'm quarantining. I think I might have coronavirus. And I was like, you're fine. It's You're fine. You haven't left I mean, the house in a month and a half. Well, you know what? Go go put that camera on him right now. We go. The, uh, people need to see his little cute face. He gonna be so. It's <laughs> gonna oh, be like he's gonna be mad, but we're just gonna say hey, and then I'll come back in there. It's just a little. It's just a little hey. It's just a little guten tag. Can we just say hey while we're live? Mom is being so nice. Oh, I just want to see because you're just so sweet. Look at you. Look how adorable you look. <laughs> From see Philly to Berlin. Yeah, I see you, boo. Turn that I just want. I just want everyone to be able to see you for at least one second because we're getting such great comments. People are like, what's the name of this song? It's called Back to Life. It's by Fat. People are saying, oh my God, they're so cute. They're so amazing. They're so adorable. Um, I've been reading all these comments. Amazing song. Love. Um, read, read. What's, what's the name of the song again? Living for the, that highlight better come through. Oh, snap. This song is giving me life. So the folks highlight. are really, really living for y'all right now. 
So I didn't want to. I didn't want to invade you while you were while you were self quarantining. No, I'm all, I'm with it now. Aaron just knows how I get when I get you know sick and moody. So I didn't want to be like a bitch. You know, we gotta live together. <laughs> no, I understand. We don't. You don't have. To, you don't have to stay in there. I just want Aaron. I want everyone to see you for just a second. Aaron, you can go back to your little setup with your incense and your flowers. Well, no, okay, I told you. <laughs> he also like likes to get his sleeve or shit. He like uh, uh-uh, it's too late. Now, to everyone who's just tuning in, this is Bob Live. I am here with Fat Music. Um, you can follow them on Instagram, please, right there. You see the Instagram? Follow right there. It's at that, P-H-A-T Music. Um, and that song was called it's Back F- to Life. It's what? That's F-H-A-T. What did I say? P-H-A-T. Oh, sorry. Y'all can see it. Don't listen to me. I'm looking at the screen, and I still say it's F-H-A-T. Is that an acronym for something, or what is that? We just were like, we're doing the like the '90s PHA team with an S because I just thought it was cute. And even that video, y'all was very '90s with your like with the uh, uh, the per, the mixing of the the mixing of patterns. I was like, oh, they really come up for this gig, honey. That's how we started. Exactly. We're really broke, and in Berlin, there's a lot of thrift shops, so it works. We served your Work. queen like and brandy in that video. <laughs> So for everyone who's uh, who's in, who's wondering too, who needs to scoop? Can y'all just scoop a little closer to the middle? Yeah, yes, please then. So years ago, my name used to be Kitten with a Whip, and I changed my name to Bob the Drag Queen. And then at that, right before I changed my name, Aaron had convinced the owner Barracuda to give me a job at Barracuda. Barracuda is this bar. When I say when you work at Barracuda, you are you become an instantly legendary queen. It used to be Candace Kane, Peppermint, and then me. That was 20 years of programming. There were only three hosts. I was the, for the 20th year. Um, and Aaron really believed in me, so I'm so grateful to you for that whole part of life. Again, if you're just joining, this is Bob Live. I am here with Fat, comprised of us. Cedric, what's your last name, baby? Perry. Perry? Like 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 Tyler? Perry? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. I'm here with Cedric Perry and Aaron Pfeiffer. And by the way, Aaron... Did you change the spelling of your name when you went back to Berlin? Because it used to be Pfeiffer, and now you're F Pfeiffer. <laughs> I did when I went. I did. I auditioned for The Voice in 2013, and I just changed it so that people could find my artist page. You know, trying to be a scammer, and I just did never you changed change it legally. No, but Bob, I wanted to bring up. Do you remember the night we were in the basement getting ready for a night, and you were, you know, getting ready to start work, or whatever, and you were like, um, Aaron. I'm changing my name. <laughs> and I was like, to what? And you were like, to Bob. Bob the drag queen. <laughs> and I was like, what? Like, are you serious? And I was like, whatever you do, do it. And you're going to slay whatever you do as, as you are and always have. And I couldn't even say no. I was like, of course, whatever you do, just yes. Well, I was thinking about changing my name because I thought it'd be really funny if a drag queen named Bob went on like a pageant or like a big TV show and they were like, and the winner of RuPaul's Drag Race is some dude named Bob. I was like, that would be so funny. Anyway, it turns out it was funny. <laughs> it was brilliant. It was life-changing. <laughs> turns out I was right, and it was funny. Also, again, again, if you're just joining, this is Bob Live. I'm right now talking with Fat. Um, and we if, go ahead, ask your questions right down there in that little comment section, and I will be asking those questions. They are based out of Berlin. I want to talk real quick about uh, when you did uh, What You're Packing, and and you text me, and you were like, um, Bob, will you post this? And I was like, yeah, girl, I'll post it. But then, out of nowhere, RuPaul fully, like, just randomly, and you, and you thought I had, you were like, did you tell RuPaul to do this? I was like, girl, I love that you think I have access to RuPaul. That is hilarious. <laughs> I, I messaged you, I messaged Bianca, and I messaged Monet. I said, did somebody send this over to Ru? Because how the hell did she get this video? And she just maybe she think y'all cute. I don't know. And by the way, the video is so amazing. It looks expensive. Thank you. It was. It was pretty low budget, but it was a lot of helping hands, a lot of creative minds. We did it all one day in London on a sixteen millimeter camera, like old school seventies. We had no idea Word. what the footage was gonna look like for weeks. It was. So oh, because you can't monitor. It. That's right. Because you can't monitor it or anything. You can't edit. You gotta think about that. It was just like we didn't know what the footage was gonna look like. That was a crazy for fucking a week. day. Like it was crazy. 
the main guy, the pilot, uh, he left that day to go be on Celebrity Big Brother, like Ukraine or something. And he had to play like a super homophobe. So it was crazy that he was in this gay video, like being gay and then left. And he actually won. He won like Polish Big Brother or whatever. Now, I know uh, you speak German, Aaron. Do you speak German too, Cedric? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> because, because Aaron, your, your mom was German, yes. right? Because I remember we would, we would be hanging out at Barracuda, and then Aaron would just all of a sudden start talking. But Aaron also has a... Okay, Aaron is from Pittsburgh, but for some reason it has a southern accent, southern but point. also would be speaking in German, but also with this really gay southern accent, be like, girl, guten tag. Eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf, und sechs, sieben, neun. <laughs> <laughs> but the funniest thing, I even like... Wait, he clocked us so I know, it's so funny. <laughs> I, um... Don't even know. It's the Pittsburgh thing. It, we have this very Pittsburgh accent. And I noticed it, like, with Billy Porter, too, because he's from Pittsburgh as well. Pittsburgh is the same. And he still has this twang sometimes when he's talking. I'm like, it's just a Pittsburgh thing. Like, we just talk, like, we say yins and that and Danton. Can you give me a little bit of uh, your your German? I just really want I haven't heard it in so long. Was sollst du mir sagen? Ich werde dich umbringen, bitch. Um, so oh my God. I'm gonna reason. But I, I I can say that I can say I've learned to say I'm gonna kill you in a lot of languages. So I can say ich werde dich umbringen, but I can't say much else. I just can, I can say I'm gonna kill you in like maybe ten languages. I can say um um te voy a matar. Um, that's uh, Spanish, and then Serbian is a ubichute. Italian is a ti Um and then uh, I think uh, uh, Fili- in Filipino it's a gutaha. Anyway, it's it's. I, I thought it was funny, and you know what? I still think it's funny. I'm gonna actually. If you're just tuning in, this is Bob Live. I'm here with Fat. Uh, this is comprised of uh, Cedric Perry and Aaron Pfeiffer, and I'm gonna read you some of these questions they have right now. Uh, Priscilla yeah. wants to know what is life like in Berlin versus the U.S. Because you're both from Philly and Pittsburgh, and uh, Aaron, you lived in New York City, and now y'all are living in Berlin. So what's life like um, in Berlin versus the U.S.? Do you have a whole week to talk about that? Because it's like two different worlds. Like, <laughs> girl, just just a moment, honey, just a moment. And we've been here for three years, so it's like so many such like social economic differences like we got some definite help from the government right after coronavirus like it was like no problem and like america was struggling for weeks i know so many of my friends were out of the job like waiting for the 1200 dollar check to help like Mm -hmm. get their lives and like germany was like just socially economically it's a whole different world like the food's different and the people are different and the food's bland as hell bland I will say, I've learned this. There's only one, in my opinion, and don't at me, in my opinion, (laughs) as far as countries with white people, the only one that has popping food is Italy. Once you leave Italy, the food is about to be, is about to be boiled chicken. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, schnitzel and boiled chicken, girls. Schnitzel and boiled it. chicken. Again, if you are just joining, this is Bob Live. Thank you for tuning in. Um, this is being broadcast on my in, on my Twitter, my Twitch, and my Facebook Live. If you're watching on Facebook, please take a moment to click that share button. We are currently at 75. I know we can get 100 shares. I just know it. So please click share, <laughs> click share. I'm going to keep reading these uh, these uh, questions. Uh, Cesar De La Rosa wants to know, any horror stories from Bob working with you, Aaron? Horror story from you working with me. Not one. I mean, there was the Lily Heavenly night, but that was oh, a uh, horror wait, story. Wait, wait. Okay, so we. Oh my God, uh, Monet was just quoting this. I was just. I told Monet I was going to be, have you be my guest, and Monet started going, "Lily, please leave, please. Oh my God. Just leave, Lily, please." Okay, so I'm going to spill the tea. So one of my drag daughters, her name is Lily Heavenly, and uh, she 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 can kick him back. She can kick them back, all right? So we were at the, uh, we were, I was pulling up to Barracuda one night, and this, I think, I don't even think I've been on Drag Race yet. The the car did just pulled up to Barracuda, 
And I just see, like, Aaron and the bodyguards outside, like, arguing with someone. Like, who are they arguing with? And then they're, like, saying, they're telling my friend Lily, who's not in drag, she's out of drag, that you can't come in. And she just was not accepting that as an answer. She was like, I'm getting in that bar. And the, the owners, the managers, the police, the deputy, and the owners. fire marshal are all outside like, Mary, you're not getting in this bar. And in the midst of all the insanity, <laughs> Lily is like physically fighting these, these security guards. <laughs> Aaron is in the corners going, Lily, please leave, please. Please, Lily, it's just not tonight. Come back later. I'll let you in any other night. Just like, I forget what went down. Something went down. She was, like, not allowed in by, like, I don't remember, but I really literally cannot remember. It's, like, killing me. My brain is so fried from living in Germany. She said nothing but death can keep me from it. <laughs> she was, like, pulling on the door, and I was, like, just go ahead. Now, the gag is, so, the, the, like, I'm not, Mondays used to be packed and lit, so inside it is, like, stuffed to the gills, and then outside there are people, like, waiting to get in, and Lily is holding up the Entire operation that that shit got me together. Uh, someone wants to know what was Bob like as an employee. To be fair, I didn't like work there as a bartender. I was I was talent. So yeah. like ta talent is is different than like everyone else because ta drag queens are all divas. They walk in like the drag queens walk in like we own the place and we make less money than anybody working. <laughs> 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 Bob, oh my god, you were so magical! Like the whole experience of like meeting you at Excess. Also, sorry, welcome awesome. Pixie. Thank you for joining us, Pixie. Sorry, continue. Pixie's here. Pixie's here, baby. Ah! Hey, Pixie, I'm in cool now. Oh, Sable Cities is here. Pixie is here. Oh, the children oh, are oh, here to turn to the party, honey. I don't know if it's a I told you. Um. So yeah, working with Bob is literally just, it's a dream, you're a dream. I literally cry, like when I see how much success you've gotten over the last couple of years. I just, I can't even believe the things we did and the looks you had. And do you remember you made me, like had me perform a few times at a couple of your shows at PFF. Yeah. Uh, so many shows, like so many collaborative things and just the, what are the, the, the award shows? The, 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 the Glam Awards. The Glam Awards, like so, it was just so many things and I was just, so new to New York, and I mean, it's 10 years ago at this point, but it was just so much going on, and you were always just this beam of light. I can't believe... Stop! I'm gonna cry. Oh, you're so sweet. If you were just tuning in... I've been for a month. I can't talk. <laughs> If you are just tuning in, this is my very emotional friend, Aaron Pfeiffer, with uh, Cedric Perry. They are fat. We just played their song, Back to Life. They have an amazing... You can, it is available on iTunes. It's back to the number two, Back to Life. It is available on um, iTunes, Spotify, Google Music, all those places. And also, check out their video, What You're Packing. is so good. Also, that performance y'all just did with the, like the, that artsy-looking performance with like the lights and stuff. What was that? You don't even know what I'm talking about. It's called Loudly. Um, I could post them in the comments if you want to check them. It was like a live square of lights mm -hmm. that we perform in a warehouse in Berlin. It's called, like, Cubed. Quarantine T. Um, Work. It was really cute. Very, like, industrial. Also, uh, someone just got mad that uh, Americans are making fun of uh, uh, European food. Girl... It is what it is. That, that food is... If the, I mean, if the broken fits, child. Girl, I said it, and I ain't sorry. I'm um, sorry. And I'm not uh, changing my... Uh, I'm just going to, again, if you are just tuning in, we have a few more moments in the show. This is Bob Live. I'm with my guest, Fat. I also, had, earlier, I had Cola Scola. So please take a chance to go check out Cola Scola Special Help. I'm stuck. It is available on YouTube and Cole's Instagram. And I am currently with Fat. We just played Back to Life, which is a great song. Um, and, like, again, kudos to you. If you are here, please share. We're currently at 83 shares. Take a oh. moment to get share this. I know, I know we can get to 100 shares. It really helps a lot. We don't, I don't have a, a big production company behind me. This is independently <laughs> produced. This is me and uh, DJ Mitch Farino producing from our homes. Mitch is all the way in New Jersey. I'm over here in Manhattan. And these motherfuckers are in Berlin. So this is the, the three corners unite, honey. Yeah. yeah. Do you have anything else y'all want to plug real quick? We dropped a single last week called Waves. Oh my goodness. Oh my, where can they find this? Everywhere. Everywhere. Spotify. Just F H A T is the, the name. And Fat Music, it comes up on all the platforms. It's pretty cute. 
I could type it or something. I'm so uh, technically unsavvy. No, you're fine. The the last question that I want to ask is from David Lab, and David Lab wants to know what made you wait. Uh, what made you guys up and move, and is the music scene booming out there? You want to talk? What made us move? I feel like it was a lot of things. We both decided to explore Europe a bit. Like, we went to mm -hmm. Paris, we were in London, we did Spain, and Berlin was a stop, and we were here turning up and partying, and he was actually here writing, and then I came and started writing and connecting with people, and then kept coming back and forth a lot, and then we both got publishing deals here, and eventually yeah. just kind of like snowballed into its own thing. And we felt that people really appreciated the music we were putting out on a different level. Like people would come to the yeah. show and stuff, and it felt just, I don't know, it was a different way of life that we thought it was cool. And a lot of the uh, songs that we have, we did in London, which is like both of our dreams. Like yeah. London's like our mecca for music because there's so many good musicians and good producers and good singers that come out of that city. And every time we go there, it's kind of like, you know, actors that go to New York or LA. So yeah. that was like a big thing in the beginning. And yeah, I released a bunch of songs with a bunch of DJs beforehand that were like performing well. So I was like, let me go over to Germany and get some German money. Like some Word. Did Aaron tell you last month he had a song that was like number two on German radio? Oh my like, God. She's That's the one. So I'm, amazing. Right. I'm behind the scenes. I'm serving you. Um, I'm the pen. <laughs> num <laughs> number your song was number spy. <laughs> <laughs> Number spy on the Deutschland charts. You better what work this guy Nico Santos. He's like the biggest German star. He goes off. Yeah, that's it's amazing. Really also, I I want to weigh in for Jason Fair, who goes, I don't get about European food. I don't get mad. I get judgmental. <laughs> you need to eat some good places in Europe. There are there are so many. You're in the land of fried pickles. Also, Jason, have you ever had a fried pickles? They are the bomb. The bomb. <laughs> Dip in ranch. Dip Wait, in ranch. Wait, never went to a restaurant. There's a restaurant down the street. It's called Pan Africa, and it's amazing. Oh, you mean an African place? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you mean it's not European food? Work. Okay, go off. Um, <laughs> oh, so the, the, the African place is good. That's so crazy you would mention that. Um, thank you all so much for joining us. You're amazing. Please go follow Fat Music. This is their Instagram handle right here. Check that out. You can go check out their music, what you're packing, uh, Back to Life ways they are so amazing please 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 support them aaron and cedric thank you for joining us take your ass to sleep and cedric go get your, your oh, sick so ass much. and cedric get your sick ass back in the bed <laughs> oh. <laughs> bye bye baby i love you is that oh. it that's it baby that's it baby thank you um, thank you all for tuning in so much today. We are not quite done yet. There are a few things I want to talk about today that are a little bit more on the serious side because it's just been weighing on my head so heavily, and I just want to quickly talk about it. One of my friends today just uh, texted me about um, the the stress the Navajo Nation is going through right now. So then, like in terms of the Navajo Nation, there are about forty five thousand people currently living without water. That's without water during a pandemic from a uh, a a illness that is easily spread. So please, 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 I'm begging you, please take a moment to go to protectthesacred.net, and if you can help, please do go to protectthesacred.net if you can help. It would be greatly, greatly appreciated. If you cannot help, I understand. Um, but it's just been something I've been thinking about. It's been on my mind a lot lately. Um, and I also can't, sorry, um, I can't even not mention the fact that um, Ahmed Aubrey was brutally, brutally murdered in the streets of Georgia, which is where I'm from. It is my town. Um, and it's just really been wrecking my brain. So I would love to help us get some justice I don't know what to do. I'm not a politician. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a cop. But all I know is we can share the image. We can keep his name in the streets. We can pressure politicians and people who are in power to make sure they have a chance to do something. So we're going to leave this image up. You can screen grab it or if you just Google it, you, I'm sure you can find it. Post it on Twitter. Post it on Instagram. 
Post it wherever you can because I believe that his family deserves justice. Black lives still matter. They've been done, been mattered. Thank you all so much for joining us today. My name is Bob the Drag Queen. Um, thanks to um, Cola Scola. Go watch Help I'm Stuck. It is available on YouTube. Please go listen to Fat Music. It is available on um, is P is F H A T. That is F H A T. Available on Spotify, iTunes. Uh, thanks to everyone who helped today, and I will see you all next time. Thanks for tuning in. Bye bye.